But Drupal 8 has taken a huge leap forward by using common coding patterns and libraries. This makes Drupal a lot easier and more accessible to a lot of people. This series is meant for developers who have used Drupal before, because instead of learning how to use it, we're going to rip apart the layers and see how this machine runs. That's going to make you really dangerous and uncover possibilities you wouldn't otherwise know about. Start by downloading Drupal 8. This unzips the file to my downloads directory. I'll move it to a Drupal 8 directory. We can see all of our shiny new files here in my shiny PHPStorm editor. We need a web server, but I'm not going to waste time setting up Apache or Nginx locally. Instead, I'll use the built-in PHP web server. Move into the Drupal 8 directory. Start it by running php-s localhost colon 8000. This serves files from this directory and will hang there until you stop it. I highly recommend using this to develop. In the browser, navigate to localhost colon 8000. Hello Drupal 8 install screen. Pick the standard installation to get a few more features. On the next step, I have a problem. The xdebug.max nesting level setting in php.ini is set too low. Wah, wah. It's easy to fix. Go back to the terminal and open a new tab. Run php-ini. This will tell you where the php.ini file lives. Open it with your favorite editor. I like Vim because it gives me street cred. Search for the setting. It already exists in my file, so I'll set it to 256. If it doesn't exist in your file, just add it at the bottom. For this change to take effect, restart your web server. For us, hit Control C to kill the PHP web server and then start it again. That fixes it. Type in your database details. I'll call my database d8 under hood and pass root with no password for my super secure local computer. Now grab some coffee or a sandwich or make a new friend or go dancing or something interesting, uh, you know, while Drupal does its install thing. Ding! Give yourself a clever name and an email address, um, but enter your email, not mine. The super secret and secure password I'm using is admin. Select your country and hit save. Phew! I mean, congrats! You now have a working Drupal 8 site. You know what I love most about a new project? Creating a new Git repo. Seriously, how often do you get to type git init? In PHPStorm, you can see an example.gitignore file. Refactor, rename that to .gitignore. Open it and uncomment out the vendor line to ignore that directory. Project also has composer.json and composer.lock files. Composer is PHP's package manager, and it has changed everything in our world. If you aren't familiar with it, go watch our Composer tutorial. Seriously, you can use it in Drupal 7. We do that in that tutorial. Because of the composer.json file, you should not need to commit the vendor directory. You should also not need to commit the core directory where all of Drupal lives due to some special composer setup in Drupal. Another developer should be able to clone the project, run composer install, and both vendor and core will be downloaded for them. When I tried that, I had a little trouble with the core directory due to an autoloading quirk. Hey, it's not released yet, so there could be a bug. It's cool. In another screencast, I'll show you the proper way to use Composer with Drupal. But for now, it's safe to not commit the vendor directory at least. If you run Composer install, it'll populate that directory correctly. Zip back over to the terminal and run git add dot, and then git status. There are a lot of files in core, so it will be nice to not have to commit those someday. But other than these core files, we're not committing much. A new Drupal project doesn't contain many files. Finish this by typing git commit and typing in a clever commit message for your fellow contributors to enjoy. Done. Okay, I have a secret to tell you that will make your Drupal 8 experience many times better. 
Use a decent editor. The best is PHP Storm. Atom and Sublime are also pretty good. But if you use Notepad++ or open some directory explorer to dig around for files manually, there will be no rainbows, pixie sticks, or gumball drops in your Drupal 8 experience. Your editor must be able to autocomplete, have a directory tree, and have a keyboard shortcut to open files by file name. Okay? I've warned you. If you do use PHP Storm, yay! It has a Symfony plugin that plays nicely with Drupal 2. Score! In Preferences, under Plugins, click Browse Repositories and search for Symfony. You'll find this awesome Symfony plugin that has over 1.3 million downloads. I promise they're not mostly from me. If you don't have that installed yet, do it. I already have it. After installing, it'll ask you to restart PHP Storm. Once it's open again, head back to Preferences, search for Symfony, and you'll find a new Symfony plugin menu. Make sure to check the Enable plugin for this project box. Remember to check this for each new project. This plugin will give you some pretty sweet auto-completion that's specific to Drupal and Symfony. Sweet! We're up and running. Let's get into the code.